Today we're going to be tying a hydropsyche. You're going to start off um, with or without a bead. In this case, we have a tungsten bead with uh, lead-free wire point 015 underneath. And I'm just going to cover that with thread. You notice I'll build a ramp at the end of the thread. This is just going to help when I dub, and it helps lock the lead-free wire in place. If you don't lock it in place, your your fly is basically just going to self-destruct. Uh, it's going to slide around, and we don't want that. So uh, you want to really lock that that wire in. I started off by tying in a little ostrich uh, off the back. Um, if you look at a hydropsyche, um, you'll see that it has little tails or appendages sticking out uh, the ends of it. This step really is not needed. Um, this is, in my opinion, more for the eye of the fisherman. But uh, we'll, we'll throw it in there for this video. Um, next, we're going to tie in our scud backing. The scud backing is a darker green um, than that of what we're going to use for our dubbing. We want contrast to see two-tone in our fly. You're going to lock that in directly off the back and I'm just gonna add a little bit of thread here just to even things out and next I am going to tie in a piece of mono I'm using G thread mono um, that I use for tying some saltwater patterns but you can use just like a two pound or maybe even a four pound uh, clear mono I'm gonna tuck that mono up out of the way And we're going to go for our dubbing here. For our dubbing, I'm using a, just a light olive. This is um, an Orvis blend. But uh, you kind of want it almost light olive to apple greenish color. It uh, really depends on the time of year. And you could, when you're looking under the rocks looking at these things, you could kind of go home and match up your dubbing. Um, I'll even do these in like a, a tannish brown with a with a just a hint of green at times or sometimes just a really light green um, is what's required so you kind of it kind of depends on the time of year and what's around um, since I have wire on this I'm I'm trying to dub it uh, pretty sparse um, you don't want these things super chunky uh, some of the Rikophilia larva that I'll tie the um, freestone living larvae. Those I'll tie a little chunkier. These I, I like pretty sparse. So and generally you'll see these um, from anywhere from 14 to 18 on your tail waters. Maybe uh, here in Connecticut, like on the Hoos, you might see them. You might see them up to a 12. We're gonna go ahead and bring our scud backing forward and lock that off right behind the bead. And once we've done that, just make sure your scud backing is nice and straight over the back and go ahead and clip that off. At this point I'm going to turn my vise around so I get a better angle and go ahead and palmer that uh, mono all the way up to the bead. Make sure it's pretty tight that way you'll be able to see the segmentation through the fly. Go ahead and lock that off.
There we go. I tend to do well on these um, most of the time early in the morning. Um, usually from like 9 to 10, I would say, has been the magic hour for me. Um, that's not always the case, of course, but I, I find that to be true uh, most years. Um, especially at certain times of the years, but and I'm just gonna hit this with a little head cement whip it. And when I cut my thread, you can kind of cut your thread a little long, and that just you know that could act as legs. It's really not necessary, but whatever. And that's pretty much it. So good luck with this one, and this one's proven itself for a few years now. So good luck. Bye.